Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the video sequencer editor type. So let's get started. Now in the previous videos, I've mentioned that in our layout, we actually have different editors. We have our file browser up here. We have a preview up here. We have our properties for all of Brent Blender over on the right over here. And then we have the sequencer down here. Now the thing that you may not have noticed is that the preview and the sequencer are views of the exact same editor, the video sequencer editor type. And if you go up to the left of the preview, you can see that we have a clapperboard and we have that exact same clapperboard over here. And you can, you can select the different views by using this drop down right next to that clapperboard. And it will offer you the sequencer, the preview, and a combined view. Now, I tend to stay away from the combined view because I like to resize windows. Sometimes I want to see the, uh, the video uh, in a bigger space or I want to expand the sequencer area. Let's actually look at what we have in the sequencer down here first. And on the right, we have our uh, sidebar. Uh, it shows the properties for our strips and you can make that appear and disappear by going to the view and selecting it and unselecting it or you can hold your mouse cursor over the sequencer area and hit your end button you can toggle that and because this editor of the, the for the preview up here is the same exact editor you can do the exact same thing you can go to view and open up the sidebar or you can toggle it by holding your mouse cursor over the preview area and toggling our end button so what you'll notice is that you're going to have different options for the different views of the uh, video sequencer editor type. So let's drag some video into our sequencer so we can see what happens when we do so. so I'm going to grab Tears of Steel. This is a Creative Commons 3.0 uh, licensed video that was created by the Blender Foundation. So I'm going to provide a link uh, that you guys can download this exact same file so you can follow along. And let's actually drag and drop this into our sequencer area. And what you'll notice is that it placed our video, which is this blue strip, and our audio, which is this green strip, on separate channels. Now you'll notice that on the left side we have channel numbers. They go from one to seven. And channels can be thought of as layers. If you were using a program like Photoshop, you would layer things on top of each other and place things on higher layers or above layers if you want them to have priority over things on the lower layers. And the sequencer works exactly the same way. If we cut up our video and we place something on a higher level, on a higher channel, it will show as a priority over something on a lower channel. So if you look to the right, you'll see that we have our sidebar with the properties for the strips, but make sure that you only select one strip. By default, when it imports, it keeps both of the strips selected. So let's just click with our left mouse button anywhere on an empty area on the sequencer. And then you can click on the video strip. And you'll notice on the right, we have our settings for, the, uh, for that strip. We can set a blend setting, which will tell us if, you know, if we're uh, importing uh, images or something like that, we can actually make that make them so they can transparently uh, overlay and things like that. But there's a whole bunch of different blend settings that we can use, but cross is going to be the default that is always going to be set when we import uh, video or imagery. And if you click on the audio, you can see that there are specific settings for the audio, like setting the volume or uh, even showing the waveform. If you check mark this, you'll notice that the waveform will appear in the audio strip. And this is great for doing things like audio video syncing. Now, speaking of audio video syncing, one of the most important things that you're going to have to really make sure that you uh, have configured, which you should have if you set up your defaults, is to go down to this playback drop down and make sure that AV sync is selected from this drop down list at the top. And this is going to prioritize synchronizing the audio and the video in the preview when we play back. So that is set by default. You can also set audio scrubbing and uh, follow playhead. These are other options that I like to use by default. Now, over here we have this blue line and this blue line is called the playhead. And you'll notice as I click on the time area, this is a scrub area they would call this, uh, it has the time plus the frame number listed there. It, when you click on this, it will move that blue line, the playhead, 
to show the frame that it is overlaying down here. So this is how we actually select um, the specific frame that we want to uh, either cut from or do whatever from. But you'll notice that if you try to click on the sequencer area with your left button, it doesn't do anything. And if you hold it down, it actually makes a select box. So the time area up here is actually a, the only scrub area. If I actually hold my mouse, my left mouse button down and drag, it scrubs across. And you'll notice down here we have these orange things that are popping up. What this is, is this is the cache. So uh, as you play over the video, it will cache the video so that it plays back better. So um, this is something that is going to be very important when you start layering strips on top of each other uh, because it takes more processor power or uh, processor cycles or whatever to actually uh, render out each frame. So when you cache it, it caches the composite of all of those frames so that um, it plays back at a uh, more constant 24 frames per second. Because what will happen is uh, Blender will do its best when I hit the play button, as, as I did by hitting my space bar. You can also hit this play button down here. And it'll, it has a frame per second up here, which is 24 frames per second. Now I'm going to stop that by hitting my spacebar again. Uh, it was actually showing the frame rate up at the top. And even though uh, the frame rate may drop when you're playing back in the preview, it will always uh, render at the constant frame rate that you have set here in the frame rate settings. Now, this is something that some of you may not have noticed when I dragged and dropped the video in. And that was that the frame rate was auto detected from the video and it switched it um, automatically over here. But something that it did not do is it did not auto detect the resolution. And we can do that very quickly by going to the video strip, which is a blue strip, I'm gonna left click on it. And you can use the sequencer context menu by right clicking after you've selected and go down to movie strip. And if you click the set render size option, it will automatically detect the resolution of the video and it will set it in the render settings. Now you'll notice that this has a 1920 by 800 resolution setting. And you can see the actual uh, metadata for the resolution by going over to the source option while, this, while the video uh, strip is selected and scrolling down and you can see that it tells us that it actually has a 1920 by 800 resolution that is being reported by this video file. So that's how you quickly uh, set the resolution. I'm going to skip ahead so we can see uh, what uh, something that is more recognizable uh, proportionately. Proportionally, um, so we have people here. Uh, you can see that it actually set them to the correct resolution. Now let's look up here in the preview window, and you'll notice that we have a channel setting up here, and that it is set to channel zero. Now when we imported this video, the lowest channel that we had available to us was actually channel one. Channel zero is a special channel setting that basically says, if we're looking at the preview, always look from the highest level down. So as I said, on the left side, we have channels. Now we can have as many as 32 layers or 32 channels of things on top of each other. So when we have the channel setting at zero, it's saying look from the highest level down at all times and show us uh, things prior prioritized from that level down. Now, if we were to set it to a different channel, uh, for example, if I were to set this to channel three or something, and I had other layered imagery above channel three, it would only show in the preview from this channel listed here down. So that's actually a good way to actually maybe edit. Uh, if you have a, a group of layers of things and you just wanna actually change or look at one layer of that thing, you can specifically look at that channel by changing that channel setting. Let's change that back to zero because that's the default setting that we're gonna use 99% of the time. And uh, I mentioned that we have this, uh, this orange um, thing at the bottom when we play back. I'm gonna actually um, go back over here by clicking the scrub area in the timeline and hit my space bar to play it. And you can see that the orange is uh, going into the cache. The frames are being put into the cache. Now there's something that you can do, which I wouldn't recommend that you put on by default, but you can do a uh, prefetch of frames. 
So a prefetch, what it will do is if I click it, watch this orange line, you'll notice that Blender is reading ahead the frames and pre-caching them so that when we actually get to them, that the frame rate uh, will be as high as possible because it won't have to do all of that work in real time. Uh, the black lines that you can see on the left side and the right side represent our start frame, which is frame one, and our end frame, which is set to frame 1000. Now, we can change our start frame and our end frame by simply uh, using our control uh, home and control end button. So if I actually place my playhead somewhere and I hit control home, it now changed the start frame to the location of that playhead. And I can actually select a different frame and I can say control end and it set that end frame to uh, 662 here. Now what will happen is if I go to render render animation, it will render out the, only the things that are between these two black lines, the frame range. So uh, I did leave the prefetch option on. Make sure that you guys turn that off. It's something you do not want to, uh, to, to leave on because it will mean that Blender will be always trying to read ahead. And uh, sometimes we don't want that to happen. Sometimes we want to reserve the uh, our, our computer for you know not reading ahead, but working on what we're doing in real time. Uh, you can now render this out uh, by going to render animation. This is kind of this is going to be the basic, the most basic edit that you can do, which would be a frame range edit, which is just setting a frame range between uh, a beginning point and an end point in your video, and going to render animation, and it will render the video out using all the settings that we have over here and it will place it, on, in my case, on the desktop or wherever your output directory is. So I think that's uh, enough for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next video.